me clarify something. I didn't mean to say what I said. Well, I, I mean, I meant it, but I, I didn't mean for you to take it the way that you took it because of the way I said it. I mean, it really isn't what I said at all. It's not really what I meant to say. It's just a big misunderstanding, really. I have you confused? <laughs> Has something like that ever happened to you? Where you said something, and then somebody took it a certain way, and then you had to try to explain that you didn't mean it the way that they took it, but that's how they heard it, but that's not what you meant to say? Today we're finishing up a series called Hashtag Struggling, and today's topic is misquoted. Misquoted, and this happens to me all the time. Someone will come up to me right after one of my sermons, and they're like, yo, Pastor Mike, that message that you just spoke, you know, like when you said this point X, Y, Z, it was just like mind-blowing, and I'm thinking to myself, I didn't say that. I didn't say that at all. In fact, I'm pretty sure I said the opposite of what you just said. Although I said one thing, it was received through someone's filter a different way. And I believe this happens to God all the time. I think God speaks. I think he sent us his word. He gave us a Bible. Yet, he gets misquoted all the time. In fact, if I were God, in which you're all grateful that I'm not, <laughs> because God is not moved by human emotion like I am, if I were God, I'd be like, I'm about to stomp you like an ant if you misquote me one more time. If you misquote me one more time. Because we do it a lot. We misquote Bible scriptures. We misquote each other. It's a struggle in the church today. There's a lot of churches that I don't even think are preaching the Bible. They preach ideas, they preach opinions, but they don't preach scripture, they don't preach the word of God, and really, that's the only thing that we have to stand on. And this has been a problem from the beginning of time. From the beginning of time, this has been a problem. So let's go all the way back to the beginning. The very first book of the Bible is Genesis. And we're gonna look at Genesis chapter two, beginning in verse seven, it says this. Then the Lord God formed a man, who was that? Adam, from the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden, and there he put the man that he had formed. Who was that again? The Lord God made all kinds of trees to grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good to eat, in the middle of the garden where? Yeah, in the middle, it's not a trick. Like, in the middle of the garden, it's right here. In the middle of the garden, there were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. How many trees were there? Where? So there's two trees in the middle of the garden. Two trees in the middle of the garden. They have fruit on them. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. Two trees in the middle of the garden. Right? Got it? On the same page. Let's fast forward. Genesis 2.15. The Lord God took the man who was Adam and placed him in the garden of Eden to take care of it. And the Lord commanded him, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you are not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. How many trees were there in the middle of the garden? He can't eat from how many of them? So that leaves, that he can eat from. We got, we know math. Two trees, two trees in the middle. No, no, yeah, yeah. You're gonna remember this, you're not gonna remember anything else. No, no, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. No, no. Don't eat from this one. Yeah, yeah. Eat from this one. All right, you got that? What's this one? That one? Yeah, yeah. 
but you must not eat from the no-no tree, eat from the yaya tree. If you eat from the no-no tree, you will certainly, they had no idea what that meant. They had no idea what that meant. Die? We just live, we just start living. It's not even the first week yet, like, die just wasn't anything. The Lord God said, after he did all this, it is not good for man to be alone, I will make a helper suitable for him. I wanna point something out. In verse 15 it says, the Lord God took man, put him in the garden, that he would work it and care for it. Before God gave man a wife, he gave him a job. I don't want no scrub. <laughs> scrub is a guy who can't get no love from me. You know the song, sitting on the passenger side of his best friend's ride. I'm trying to help out some single ladies up in here. Find a good man. Before God gave him a wife, he gave him a job. He gave him a house to take care of her in, all right? And she was to help a brother out. So what has happened so far? God created plants, trees, water, sunlight, night, day, did all these things. He has created man. What has he not created yet? Woman. Woman. He has not created Eve yet. That has not happened yet. Who did God tell not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Who did he not tell? Why? She wasn't there yet. She didn't exist yet. All right, so we get this. We understand this. God never spoke to Eve. Okay, this is a setup. We gotta, we gotta understand this. God only spoke to Adam about the buffet options. <laughs> Eve didn't know what the buffet options were. She only knew what Adam was supposed to tell her. It was her husband's job to not only keep and, and, and garden and do all these things, but it was also his job to keep and protect his wife. Amen. He was to give her the knowledge and to have communication. Number two, or maybe it's number three. It's, one, it's, it's, one, it's two or three. Reason for divorce in America today is lack of communication. Lack of communication, we don't talk. And if we talk, it's about the kids. It's about our problems. We don't talk about life-giving things. We don't talk about what we want to do, where we're gonna go, our dreams, our ambitions, our feelings. We hide our feelings, we hide our emotions, we don't communicate them. So watch this. It was Adam's responsibility to tell Eve what God said, and we can only assume that he didn't do a very good job. Right? Yo, what did God say? I don't know, something about, no, no, yeah, yeah. Genesis 3, verse one. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. The serpent said to the woman, did God, I gotta, I gotta do the voice, just because it's, did God really say? <laughs> you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Did God say that? No, no. No, 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 he did not. He didn't say that. He tried to trick her. Did God really say? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't know what God said. I know what Adam said God said. I know what Adam said God said, but I don't really know what God said because I didn't talk to God. Is this what happens to Christians today? Well, I don't know what God said, but Joel Osteen said, I don't really know what the Bible says, but T.D. Jake said. I don't know what the Bible says, but Pastor Mike had really cool pants on, and what he said was. <laughs> I really don't know what God said, but I'm pretty sure what Adam said was. Genesis 3, 10, uh, 3, 2, I'm sorry. The woman said, we may eat from the tree in the garden, but God said, but I don't really know that God said, because like Adam said it, but Adam said, God said, we must not eat from the tree in the middle of the garden. True. 
But which one? Because they look exactly the same. No, no, yes, yes, yes. No. Okay, was I looking at this from the left or the right? <laughs> he said, we can't eat from the tree in the middle of the garden. And, oh my gosh, we're adding stuff. We're adding stuff now. And, you must not touch it or you'll die. God didn't say that. God didn't say that. So where did that come from? Where did that extra sentence come from? Because God didn't say that. Either, and I'm making this up because I don't know. We don't know. Either Adam was like trying to set his own rules. Here, like, listen, Eve, I'm telling you straight out. This is what God said. He said, don't eat from the trees in the middle of the garden. He didn't tell her which one. Don't eat from the trees in the middle of the garden. In fact, you know what, Eve? Don't even touch it. Don't touch God's stuff. Don't touch it. So now, she's going around saying, yo, God said we can't eat it or even touch it, or we'll die. So we don't know. We don't know if Adam told her, don't touch, don't touch it. Or if she's making it up on the fly so she can act like she knows what she's talking about. Oh, no, no, we can eat from everything. We can eat from it all. But God did say, don't eat of it. Yeah, and God said, don't even touch it. Or you'll die. Mm. She's misquoting God. But we don't know if that's her fault or if that's Adam's fault. We don't know where the misquote came from, but we just know that it's being misquoted. Now that God is being misquoted, it opens the door for deception. You see, because when we misquote God, scripture gets tainted and faith becomes weakened. When we misquote God, I'm just saying this for anybody who's taking notes, when we misquote God, scripture gets tainted and faith becomes weakened. Now the serpent has something to jump on, ready? So in Genesis 3, 4, he says, you will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. True. True statement. That is a fact. You see, this was the no-no, this was the yes-yes. Do not eat from this, but I really do want you to eat from this one. Because this is the tree of life. And if you eat from the tree of life, you will become immortal. You will live forever. I mean, you know the human body reproduces itself every seven years. Like, there's really no reason why humans don't live forever except sin. So once they eat from this tree, God's got to get them out of the garden to make sure that they then don't eat from that tree. If man eats from the yes, yes tree, the yeah, yeah tree, after eating from the no, no tree, he will become immortal in a fallen state. You gotta get him out. If man would have ate from that tree first, he would have never eaten from that tree. Just facts, fun facts for you there, all right? True statement, you will know all things like God, good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also, also desirable for gaining wisdom, gaining knowledge, she took it and ate it. I wish the story ended there because I don't think there would have been that big of repercussions. It had just been what it was. But the next sentence boggles my mind. Do you know the rest of the story? She also gave her husband some who was standing right there. <laughs> Yo, when I was a kid, I thought to myself, you know, she's all off being deceived all by herself and he's all working hard. He's at his job working and something happens back at home while he's at work. But my man was right there. <laughs> so now we got to think, okay? So maybe he did set up the rules. Maybe he said, Eve, 
don't eat it, don't even touch it. So when she's like, oh, well, God said that we can't even touch it. He's like, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, that's right. Because he's right there. Or Adam was some sort of stupid. And he forgot what God said. So she's all like, yeah, and he's like, huh. <laughs> or he's just not paying attention. Either way, he didn't do his job to protect and keep his wife. We don't know where the breakdown and the misquote came, but she eats it and she says, come on, baby. Join me on the dark side. <laughs> and he was like, hmm, 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 hmm. You, you know this, do, do I do what honors God or do I do what's right in front of me? This is also the struggle of humanity. He eats of it, we know the rest of the story. I think the breakdown comes when we don't really know what God says about our situations. What does God say about your finances? What does God say about your health? What does God say about your emotions? What does God say about raising your children? What does God say about your dreams and your hopes and your desires? What does God say? Well, I don't really know but I'm sure I could go find a book that somebody else wrote about it. But God literally sent his word. He literally put in writing what he wanted us to know and we still struggle with knowing God. Hosea 4, 6 says this, my people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. Not the lack of access to knowledge, but the lack of doing something to get the knowledge. He says, there. I've given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. It's available to you. It's readily available to you. You walk around with a Bible in your pocket. You can set alerts to tell you to read your Bible. Swipe. Busy. Come on, I'm, hey, I'm pointing at me. I'm pointing at me. Right? We lack knowledge of the word, therefore we don't know what the Bible says. We're misquoting it. We don't know what Bible passages mean. I could have totally just made up that Hosea verse. You would have no idea. Unless you go look it up. Right? I could say, turn to your Bibles to Hezekiah. 17, 17. And you sit there and watch me read Hezekiah. That's not even a Bible, book of the Bible. But it sounds like it is. See, you get what I'm saying? I'm, I'm gonna say something to you that you're not gonna hear in 99.99% of any church. You ready? Don't believe a single word that comes out of my mouth. Assume I'm a liar and I'm cheating you, and I'm tricking you, and nothing that I said is in the Bible. And if you don't think that way, you easily could be a lamb being brought to slaughter. You easily could be tricked. The Bible tells us that in the last days, there are going to be preachers preaching sermons that are leading to death and destruction and not to life everlasting. They will be preaching under and by some other name than Jehovah God. I'm just saying you owe it to yourself to look me up, to look it up. Watch what David said, Psalmist David in Psalm 119.11. I have hidden your word in my heart, O God that I might not sin against you. He's memorizing passages. He's writing down what God's saying to him that he can go back and rehearse that. All right, so tell me, is this a Bible verse? Money is the root of all evil. Sounds like it. 
what does the Bible actually say? The love of money is the root of all evil. And the word love there is the Greek word avarice, which implies an emotional affection toward money. That, that there's this like emotion about making more money and being rich. You're a paper chaser, chasing after that money. Gotta get my money, my money. Instead of using money for what it was intended, money's using you emotionally. That's the root of all evil. That lust, that greed of money is the root of all evil. Okay, how about this one? Is this a Bible verse? This too shall pass. Nope. Nope, sounds like it though, doesn't it? This too shall pass. It's actually from the lament of the doer, of doer. It's an old English poem that says this too shall pass. Now the Bible does say that where there's healing, it will cease. Where there's tongues, they will cease. Where there's the gifts of the spirit, they will cease. The Bible does say that, though those things will pass. Well, duh, when you go to heaven, you don't need the gifts of the Spirit because you're in heaven. So obviously one day they'll pass. Have they passed now? No. Should the gifts of the Spirit be in operation in the church today? Absolutely. Should it be done decently and in order? Absolutely. Should it be done in a way that's freaky, scary, and people go running? No. No. But the Spirit of God should speak to the hearts of people today. There should be lives changed. We should use the gift of the Holy Spirit to speak in a language that builds ourselves up in our most holy faith. This too shall pass is not a Bible verse, but people say it like it is. Cleanliness is next to godliness, not a Bible verse. We are in this world, but not of it. Not a Bible verse. Not Bible verses, but we say things that we think are because people have used them in sermons as if they were, okay? So how do we hear from God today? How do we hear from God today? I wanna go back into the Old Testament and look at something really quick. In 1 Samuel 3, verse one, it says this. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. Eli was his, his mentor. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. Man, it sounds like 2020, Doesn't it? Heaven was like quiet in 2020. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, which just means he had not passed away. Samuel was lying down in the house where the ark of, of God was. Then the Lord called to Samuel, Samuel being a young boy, Samuel, And Samuel answered, here I am. So he jumps up and he runs over to Eli, his mentor. He says, here I am, you called me. And Eli was like, yo, I'm sleeping. I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So he went and he laid down. Again, the Lord called to Samuel. Samuel jumped up, says, here I am. He ran into Eli's room. My son, I didn't call you. Go back and lay down. Leave me alone. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Man, did you know that that was in that passage? So have you ever said, well, you know, I think God should talk to me, but it isn't because I've done bad things? He didn't know God. He didn't have a relationship with God. He wasn't a Christian. He wasn't saved. He didn't have the Holy Spirit. Samuel did not yet know God, yet God was calling out to him. Do you know what gets me upset in church today? Can we just, can I just get on my soapbox for two seconds? We misquote God and we give God a bad name. One story, one story in the entire Bible said that God spoke to Elijah in a still small voice. One time. And now the whole church world wants to define define the voice of God as being a still small voice. Do you know why we all want to say that God speaks in a still small voice? Because we don't hear God. Do you know why we don't hear God? Because we won't shut up. Speak, Lord. Speak to me, God. Speak to me, Jesus. I'm trying to shut up. (laughs) 
We're distracted. We won't shut the TV off or our podcasts off or Netflix off long enough to let God speak. This does not say it was a still small voice. This says it was so loud that my man thought the dude in the next room was calling his name. Old Testament, just as Elijah, but we want to believe that it's like a still small voice because I don't really hear God a lot, so he must not be speaking to me because it's a still small voice. Really? It's just that we haven't inclined our ear to hear his voice. Samuel did not yet know God. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Thrice, a third time, the Lord called Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Elijah. Here I am. And Elijah said, boy, oh, I see what's going on. Samuel, go lay back down. Next time you hear your name called, say, here I am, Lord, your servant heareth. Speak, Lord, I'm listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, see, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. I'm telling you, God wants to say some stuff to you that will rock your world if you would open your ears to hear his voice. Psalm 138, too, says that God the Father has exalted his word above his name. If you want to know what God wants to say to you, you gotta crack the book open. You gotta crack the book open. You've got, to, so, so, so listen, I wanna give you guys a stupid, simple way to get into scripture. Are you ready? Take notes on Sunday. Take notes on Sundays. And don't believe a single thing I say. Even write in your notes, I don't believe this. This is too good to be true. This guy's crazy. His beard's on point, but he's still crazy. <laughs> right? I don't care what you write in your notes. Take notes. Write down the Bible verses. And then on Monday, when you get up to do devotions, when you get up to do some Bible time, on Monday, take out those notes and be like, I don't believe this guy. I'm going to prove him wrong. And prove me wrong. Prove it wrong. Don't email me and cuss me out about it, but <laughs> prove me wrong. See what that scripture that I said this week means to you. You see, there's two things that I always pray over you every single week. The first one's in the beginning and then one's at the end. The first one in the beginning is what? That the Holy Spirit would open the eyes of your understanding, enlighten you to his truth. That, that's so that you see something in scripture. So today, I gave you a marriage lesson. Today, I gave you a finance lesson. Today, I gave you a healing lesson. Today, I gave you a communication lesson. Today, I gave you a Bible study lesson. All in one, if you had ears to hear, right? A lot of people say, ah, oh, he's talking about relationships. He said, Adam and Eve were husband and wife, and I'm single, so this has nothing to do with me. You want to be single the rest of your life? No, maybe. <laughs> be it unto you according to your faith. <laughs> and then what's the second one I pray as we leave? Lord, I pray that they are blessed coming in, going out. Everything they set their hands to would prosper and be successful, right? These things need to become realities in your life when you know what the word of God says about those. You need to be quoting those things over your own life, seeing what the word of God says. Look those things up. See if they're Bible verses. Now watch this, John 12, 47. If anyone hears my words, but does not keep them, I'm not gonna judge that person. Whatever, do what you want. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. There is a judge that want, the one who, that rejects me and does not accept my words, those very words I have spoken, they will condemn them in the last day. Watch this. He says, 
but I did not speak on my own. I only spoke what I heard the Father speak. See, the one who could have misquoted did not. The one who was the word and could have made up any word he wanted to said, I'm only gonna speak the words of my Father. You see, the first Jesus, Adam, he didn't really know what he was saying. He was just speaking, what uh, God said. Same temptations to Jesus, brought out into the wilderness. He says, turn this, the devil says to Jesus, turn this rock into bread that you may eat. He had been on a 40 day fast. He said, man shall, for God said, man shall not live on bread alone, but for word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Well, well, we'll jump off here and, and let the angels guard you up. He says, tempt not the Lord thy God. He says, well, bow down and worship me, and I'll give you all this. He said, there is only one true God. Thou shalt not bow down to any of the God but the God, Jehovah God. Every single time he came back with scripture. In your life, in your life, when problems come, when temptation comes, when struggles come, what does the Bible say about your situation? Get a verse. Got a problem? Get a verse. There's a t-shirt. Somebody needs to make that. Got a problem? Get a verse. Amen. Go ahead, Nikki. I just, Nikki, I just made you a million dollars. Got a problem? Get a verse. Come on, somebody. Google it. Google it. Verse about, scripture about whatever your problem is. He said, I've sent my word. Don't misquote me. He said, don't misquote me. I wrote it down. Amen. Father, we thank you today that your word has come to us at just the right time. We thank you, Lord, for speaking to our hearts today. I pray, God, that there is a hunger for your word that begins to burn in us as a generation, that we would hunger and thirst for more of your word, for more revelation knowledge into our everyday lives. Help us to not just be hearers of that word, but doers also. Father, I thank you as we leave here that we are blessed. Everything we set our hands to would prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. I love you. There's offering baskets at the door on the way out.